So here we are, started our walk, uh, just got to get to the top of the mountains now, me and Al, so uh, I'll see you on the way, bye, hello, <laughs> here's me and Al, hello. we're uh, just on the outskirts of Horace Fack here now, we've, uh, we've come from that direction, so uh, here we go, just like the long trek to um, Three day trek to Suda. So uh, we'll keep going live all through the uh, through the walk. And uh, a lot of you probably won't be up now, so we'll probably see you just at breakfast. So I'll see you later on. Bye. Right, we've just left the main junction from Spak here to the start of the uh, climb. We're on the climb now. It's, uh, it's about eight k's of climb. That's where we're going up there. We're just on our way to where uh, General Freiburg's HQ was. So uh, we're popping there. It's only about 50 meters off the track, and uh, and we'll show you that. All right. See you later. Our dreams will live the week. Right. We're at the bottom of the walk from uh, Sfakia to the bottom of the climb, which is over there. Now Fre Freiburg's cave was just over there. And the soldiers, the retreating soldiers, went down, came down that gorge there, and that gorge there, and of course down the main road there, uh, being uh, hastily chased by the, the Germans. Okay, so me and now now, we've done the four k's from Svakia to the bottom of the climb. Now we're going to do the, uh, we're going to attempt the climb up there. All right, enjoy your breakfast. See you later. <laughs> I know we'll keep in our hearts till then. Hello. We're right, we're General Fre Freiburg's um, HQ cave. Now, General Freiburg was, um, he was the commander of all uh, Allied forces in Crete at the time of the battle. There's his cave over there. Okay. And um, the troops were coming down the main road behind us, which we're going to walk up in a minute, eight k's worth. And there's a there's a ravine on the other side, a gorge of this ridge here, and there's a gorge just down there, and this is where the Allied troops were coming to get to Sfakia, which was just over there. Um, there were dispersal points just over here, and 60 men were detailed to act as guides for all the troops to get down to the beaches for embarkation. Um, and just over here, here's Freiburg's cave here, just over there. The Germans got to within a couple of hundred yards of the cave. So they sent a platoon out from 20th Battalion, New Zealand Regiment. Uh, and in charge of that was 2nd Lieutenant um, Charles Upham, who that was part of his um, uh, action that went towards him winning his uh, first of his two VCs he won during the war. One of only three men to win the VCs twice. Uh, he went out there with his patrol and uh, when he came back, they left a, a machine gun silenced and 22 Germans dead. Top man. So... Uh, yeah, then he went on to uh, evacuate to Africa, uh, and that's, I believe, where he won his second VC, top man. So, yeah, look him up, Charles, Charles Upham, VC. So, hello, Al. Hello, good day. <laughs> Got the big climb in a minute, so um, probably see you halfway up there or uh, at the top. See you later. When all the world will be free, please wait. And mountains that we must climb. 
Right, we're about halfway up. Me and now. Yeah. There we are. We just walked all the way from up there. Uh, sorry, down there. Down there. Up here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's a lovely view from up there. I expect all you people in the UK are now having your breakfast. We had those about four hours ago. So, uh, we're about halfway up this climb now. And yeah, well, it is. So, uh, hopefully, we'll catch up with you at the top. If we're still alive, eh? <laughs> <laughs> not dead. <laughs> yeah, nice views, have a look. Lovely view, lovely day. Glorious sunshine. Yeah. I'll see you later. Could be better. Enjoy your breakfast. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> We're live. Well then. It's live from the top of the hill. <laughs> live again. Hello, folks. <laughs> Right, so it's about an 8k climb to the, like I say, to the top of this. You can see behind us the climb we've been doing. Uh, we've got about another k to go. So, because uh, we like going uphill. <laughs> you do. Uh, so, uh, another k to go. Hope you've all had your breakfast out there. We've been up since, uh, well, I've been up since half four. That's uh, half two in the UK. Uh, we've got about another cake, I say, to go to the top. So uh, we'll see you at the top, folks. Have a nice day. Here's the view. Hang on. I know every game must have a law. Hello. Right, live again. Me and now, we managed to reach the top of the, uh, the climb. So this is what it's like. I'll show you. There's the gorge. So a lot of the soldiers during the war. They would have walked down this gorge, down that direction, uh, down to back here, and there's a gorge on the other side here. Um, so, what happened? Over 20,000 soldiers made this uh, walk from the north of the island after fierce fighting. Uh, they walked along the road we're going to go along now. Um, and when they got there, only six, about 16,000, just over 16,000, got off at the beach. The other 5,000 had to surrender. They had. Uh, they were battle weary, they were, they were knackered from doing this walk. Only to be told that they've got to walk all the way back again. So, uh, they were pretty pissed off about that. So, um, I'd like to tell you a story about when they got here. They got here, where we are now, and there was a well here. But when they got to the well, the chain was broken and the bucket of the well was at the bottom of the well. So an enterprising young Aussie soldier came up and he had a length of twine on him. He tied his water bottle to it, dipped it down, filled his, filled his water bottle. Well, everyone wanted to borrow his twine. So they, uh, in the end, he turned around and said, I'm not staying here all day. And, like, and he just took his twine and started his walk back. Uh, but, yeah, so that's the kind of thing that we're happening in here. Um, we're going to make the walk now down to Askifu. Uh, where there was a lot of fighting. There was a fighting just up at this gorge. This is where the rear guard were and the retreating forces were coming through the positions of the rear guard. Um, obviously down to the beach. So, uh, yeah. I don't know who we've got live here. It's not saying who's on here, but... Uh, all right, yeah. All right. So, uh, lovely, jubbly. lovely jubbly. So there we are. We've done the probably the hardest bit of the walk. Uh, all it is now is distance. So... Um, what, what elevation are we at now? About 1,400 metres, isn't it? Yeah. About 3,000 foot, I think, something like that. So that's what we've just walked up. Uh, and it's getting to near noon, so uh, it's getting to be near the hottest part of the day. A touch warm. Yeah, so... Uh, right then. I'll uh, see you later. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> right, we've, uh, we're about a mile north of Imros. Um, so there's Inbrus Gorge there, or the start of it. Going down there. Now, back in the war, during the war, there was, um, about this location, there was uh, a, a rear guard stationed here. And during the night, and what they were doing was allowing the, the, the main evacuation force to pass through, and uh, obviously guard their rear. Um, during the night, they saw shadows darting about in these gorges on the hillsides and what have you. And they originally thought, because they had dark tunics and khaki shorts, that they were um, Air Force lads. 
but they weren't. They, 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 found, they, they decided that they were German and opened fire. When they did a recce in the morning, they found over a hundred German, Germans laying dead. Uh, so obviously they were Germans. But what they'd done, uh, when they'd gone through Suda and that, they'd, um, they'd nix uh, British tropical um, clothes uh, because their own gear was too heavy in this heat to, uh, to fight with. So that's why they, they didn't immediately recognise who they was. But uh, yeah, that happened in this location here. Say hello, Al. Hello, going well. <laughs> I said, say hello, Al. Hello, Al. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're about three miles we wrecked from the end of uh, the walk for the first day. My feet are in shreds. Uh, but there you go. Um, so, uh, have a have a lovely day and I'll see you when we get to Asky food. Alright. <laughs> see you later. So Al. Ta Ta Al. <laughs> see you later. That are lost is nothing but oh, again. <laughs> right, we've just come through that uh through that gorge there. Or the entrance of the gorge. And this over here now is the Asky food plain. Over there. And can you see that? Tarmac road to the left, just running over there. Well, on the night of the 28th of May 1941, you can imagine there was thousands of troops um, walking from the north of the island to the south, and it was walking at night time because they were prone to attacks by a Stuka uh, during the day, a Stuka dive bombers. Well, there was, there was a course on their, on their uh, walk during the night. And all of a sudden a flare went up. Don't forget there's thousands of men. A flare went up from a German aircraft. Um, so everyone dashed for cover. But there was a, a guy there called Wooker. I'm assuming he's going to be a commander of some sort. And he passed a message along the column by word of mouth. He said, when, it, when you hear my whistle, everyone get off the road and bury your faces in the dirt. So uh, a few moments went by. They could, uh, they could hear another German aircraft and uh, the flare went off. So Walker blew his whistle and every man jack uh, scattered for the road and buried their faces so the, the flare wouldn't obviously eliminate their faces. So all the German pilots saw was, uh, was an empty road. So, uh, yeah, for them, I mean, you think of these men, I mean, doing this walk, I'm with me and Al here doing this walk now. Uh, and they did it over two or three days as well. But they had 40 or 50 years on us. <laughs> but that's not <laughs> taken away. That, don't forget, they fought a battle at the beginning of it. And, and they were fighting a battle all the way uh, during the retreat. Uh, lay forces and rear guards leapfrogging each other. Um, so it's quite amazing to think what they went through. And the poor buggers that, were, that couldn't get off the island uh, 5,000 of them, they had to walk back. <laughs> Sod that, can you imagine that? <laughs> or even at the beginning, like imagine being a gunner in a gun position. And the uh, troop commander comes and says, okay, Jenksy, grab your kit. He goes, oh, where are we going, sir? Over them mountains. You can f f flip in X, sir. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's got to take you that off to the boys eight years ago that did it, so, uh, I'm going to walk for, along that road there now, past the uh, Askew Fu Plain, and there was many uh, contacts um, along here. Um, so what happened was, the Germans had three regiments of mountain and paratroopers chasing them. But, just before the Askew Fu Plain, or at Vries it was, which we're going to go through tomorrow, um, they thought all the troops we're going to regroup in a village called, uh, or a town called Refimno, on the north coast. So they detached two, two of those regiments to go east to Refimno, and only one regiment to, uh, to follow. They didn't know they were retreating at the time, or that they were going to get taken off the beach down the south. So, uh, yeah. so luckily there was only re one regiment following them, and they got basically obliterated. Then of course when the Germans found out that they were using Sfakia as a, an embarkation port then they started throwing all resources at it and uh, at the end of the day 5,000 troops were stuck 
and that's a capitulate. So uh, there you go, another little bit of story. We've got about two miles left, I think, so uh, I'll see you when we get to our destination. See you later. Let's dream of what there will be Till then We'll call on each memory Till then When I will hold you again Please wait Till then Said. It was like that it is. We're here now. We're at the end. 20 k 15 mile. 15 mile. Like that. Up like that. <laughs> Whose <laughs> idea was this? Your son, Major. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, I want to thank you all for your comments, all those that have watched the videos. Uh, that's it, we're one third out of the way, so I've earned, or well, me and Al, has earned one third of your money. So, thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow. Finished! <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> all right, uh, uh, well, one third of it, anyway. Yeah, so that's uh, that was 25 k's. Imagine it was like that. What, like that it was? Yeah, so, uh, glad that's out of the way. Um, but I'm going to finish off now. With and all you military will know what it's all about. A naffy growler. No, I'm not talking about the birds. <laughs> I'm <laughs> talking about one of these. Hi. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. And thank you for all for your, all for your donations. All right. Well, we weren't one third of it, so uh, see you tomorrow. See, say, say, tell Al. Tell all. See you tomorrow. Twenty-five mile done. Yeah, and uh, our backup driver Irene, who's, who's done a sterling job. There you go. Say hello, Irene. Hi. Go. I'm over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. So uh, thank you, and I'll see you tomorrow. Right. Bye. Engage! 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 Engage!